On this episode of Pickrich's Brain, my guest is Kevin Murphy, and we're talking about paying dues, monetizing the things that people love and hate about you, and what it really means to make it. Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor, Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits, over 30 years of been there, done that, wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. What's up, everybody? Rich Redman here. Welcome to episode 14 of Pick Rich's Brain. We're coming to you from Crash Studio, beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks for tuning in. My guest, Mr. Kevin Murphy. How are you, bud? Good to see Good you, to man. See you. This is actually the first time I've had you over to the Casa. I've had the place since 2010. I've never seen it. And here we are. It's a lot of red, a lot of red and black. Um, Aren't all of your... I love red and black. Kind of, that's your... That's I my mean, thing. Isn't that your stick? It's like a little... It's my shtick. That well, is my... <laughs> You got to get them to d- d- <laughs> dip it extra to, long. D- just keep, just dip. You got to make your plied sticks because about 10 minutes in, your stick isn't black I know, anymore. it really is great. Are these the guys that get uh, sticky when they get Yeah, they get hot? tacky like me. <laughs> when your body temperature rises. So folks, we are, we are so, so happy to be together, spending time together. We're drinking our faux coffee. It's actually just water. Boop. Love it, right? Yeah. Mm. But if you're tuning in, um, Kevin is is a one of the backbones, one of the one of the backbones of the Nashville drumming community. You really, really are. How many, you, how many bones are in a back? There's, 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 <laughs> a, I mean, that's the question. You're there. If someone says Nashville drummer, your name is going to come up. Um, we're getting some bleed over there. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to turn off the uh, speaker here. Sorry. It's it's right at the top there. There we go. There you go. Um, but anyways, so top right, uh, yeah. Jim. So you're, you've been playing with um, with Randy Hauser yes. since 2010 for a minute. Yeah. Sorry. And uh, it's been, I caused it's all been of great. It's been great. I caused right? the R rated. It's been a great ride. It has. Right? It and has. So, so, so. Uh, coming up, I guess, wow. I think I was at the tail end of 10. Because mm-hmm. um, I think we were talking about it the other day. John Henry has been with them for almost, for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I uh, uh, I think I've been with them for not quite eight. Is it, is it nice to have. A steady job in the music business. I mean, it's just like surprising. rarefied air. It's surprising. Um, it's surprising in Nashville too, uh, in particular because um, not a lot of loyalty here. As a general, they don't. Way. They love using the word. They love you. Uh, maybe I should. I, when you it know happens, what? I'm going to do this. When it happens, I'm going to give this to you. Like, like they love using the word loyalty. Right. If you bail. You know what I mean? And we're going to go live with me. We're going live. We're yeah. we're tripling down on all the platforms. I'm going to double. I'm going to triple down. I'm going to give this to you, and you can just stick it somewhere. How about that? <laughs> um, Don't tell me. Um, you know, you need to lean it on. Oh, the coffee mug or whatever. Just whatever. Just yeah, so it doesn't right. bug your situation. Um, you know, they're really big. If you leave uh, a gig, they're real big on like, well, oh, that guy isn't loyal or whatever. Yeah. But. They really don't think of you much when it's time for you to when they think it's time for you to go, you know. So for me, I have a many rants about the whole loyalty thing, but I've been lucky in that you know when there's been a problem musically or something didn't feel right, um, Randy hasn't been the guy that there's been a lot of art artists in Nashville like boy things just don't feel right. Maybe we should swap out the drummer, and it's like no, maybe you should practice. I don't know. Maybe you should. Do write better stuff. I know. But yeah. lucky, luckily, I have. Uh, he's never been like, oh, there's something wrong. Oh, let's swap out drummers and give yeah. it a shot. Well, the, the, you know, the, it's a mutual admiration society. You know, when you when when you find that right situation, you, you get along great with all the guys in your band. You're on a you're you know year after year, you guys are on a great tour. Mm-hmm. Um, he's doing well on the radio. Mm-hmm. It's just a great thing. Man. Well, and I will say this: the 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 you know the years the the, the summer I did Big and Rich. Yeah. Um, was strangely a summer where I was fired by Randy. Mm-hmm. But it was for the best reason ever. It was like I was a year in, mm-hmm. and Randy was like, hey, man, my best friend from high school, Jay, wants to leave the, well, I forget, he worked on like an oil rig or something like that. Yeah. And he was like, he wants to, he's, he was my drummer in my high school band, and I want to, I, want him to, I want to have him out. I want to give him his shot at doing this. Great. And I was like, for him. Wow. Yeah. You know what? I mean, I'll do something else, but that's there's kind of a no better reason to not get a gig, right? And uh, or lose it. And Jay did it for a summer, mm-hmm. and then you know, Randy's Randy's uh, manager Nick called me, you know, seven months later and was like, "All right, well, he had fun. He's back on the oil rig." I mean, I mean a, good, Come on back. <laughs> a good drummer is always going to work, right? A good drummer is always uh, you, you know. one would hope, yeah. And, and thus far, um, you, you do now. There's a bit of a glut in that. Um, there's some 
this goes back to the dues statements. We were talking about we were, paying dues earlier. You know, where there's right. some, um, with the advent of technology, technology, beat detective, editing stuff, uh, there's a lot of guys that were kind of sneaking in without having built built them built their foundation, foundation. you know um but i think ultimately long term those guys n- don't end up sticking around there are some guys right now that i know and I, i'm I, you know i'll save the naming for my your podcast for, for my podcast when i'm just a <laughs> son of a bitch to everybody <laughs> but um there are some guys that i know that you look at their thing and you're like there's some people that you look at and you're like wow you shouldn't be posting videos you, should, you might not there's you may want to not play drums, but you certainly don't want to post this video. But there are other guys that you post it and you, where you're like, why is this guy not holding down gigs? Yeah. Because he's really good. Right. He can play. And you realize it's part of this foundation thing. And I was talking with Travis McNabb. I, I had coffee with Travis mm-hmm. yesterday, who's a great friend of ours. Yeah, and, love Travis. and he and I were talking about, and you'll love this too, because we're roughly the same age. And you went to school. You and Riley were with Sutter. And Chamberlain was just before you. Yep. And, and Carlock was there. UAT. And, oh, yeah. and Blair Blair all, the real, all the real heavy-handed the marching guys like Kevin Murray and guys like that. Those dudes were there. And Cinta was there. So you had a little circle that was... It's pretty fierce. pretty robust. Like, it was there's some blood on the teeth down there. Like, and Earl Harvin was just before you, and Earl, he is a yeah. nightmare. Yeah. You know, but all of us in this age group, and McHugh brought this up to me the other day, and I said it to Travis, and we talked about it more. There's a lot of guys now that will call themselves a session drummer mm-hmm. or, or recording drummer or whatever. They'll, they'll, they'll imply that they're the, they're the dude to track some stuff. And they're young enough to where I know that they haven't done the following. Unless you've sat in a room where 24 or 48 channels of tape yes. were all live, and there was an engineer and four dudes on the floor, and everybody was rocking, and it was magic. And at the end of that three and a half minute song, you blew it. And everybody had to do it again, and the magic tape was gone. Unless you have experienced the, the, the raging humility that comes with that punch on the nose of yeah. being, the, being the reason everything just stopped. Are you really a session guy? Like, have you, have you, do you really know what it is if the only thing you know is I'll play it and then later they're going to spank me through that session, that, 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 that program, and this session's done? Well, the you other know? thing is, is, is what I no- was noticing, and this is even as early as 10 years ago, new guys coming in, they can't make it through a track all the way without punching. Yeah. You should be able to do that. At least. I think you should be able to make it all the way through a track. Yeah. And, for, then, and then if the producer likes to work in sections, because a lot of rock producers like to work in sections, yeah. you know, the, you know, whereas what's great about the training we get here is count it off. You might only get one shot at right. this. So especially when they're firing, especially when they're trying, trying to fire through five or six demos, like fast, quick. You cannot be the guy to hold um, that up. And the problem, you know, problem with that is you miss out on that, uh, that the, that wonderful thing that we grew up doing when we first started doing sessions, and I'm sure guys like McHugh or Morrow have long stories about when they started because they were a little bit ahead of us. Yeah. Imagine like the amount of times they were able to really build something and really dig into a song and and ask what the lyrics mean and and talk about reference. You know these other albums that we wanted to. Um, whereas now it's like that, it's not, like we got nine songs to do before okay, lunch. Let's go. Let's go. But sometimes if you have too much time. Oh well, I, I mean, go the opposite way. I'm, I'm a, I'm a. When I do my e sessions at home, I do. I, I if I have to stop because I just I won't punch anything. There's no one will ever get a track from me that's punched. <laughs> it's it's four minutes. No one's asking me to do tool songs. Yeah, right. No one's sending me their 11 minute demo with right. n- tempo changes. So, you know, they're they're generally pop or country or metal songs or whatever. And I'll, <laughs> if I have to stop, well, I'll just make a mental note. I'll. I'll, I'll address my chart i'll erase everything and i'll just do it again and inevitably they pay me they pay me their couple hundred bucks and i give them two solid passes of like well bread and butter like just and then you give them a crazy one and then i give them a a a, a little livelier yeah. pass where it's like i'm stretching out a little bit and it's a little more what i call even if it's metal the more keltner vibe where it's like maybe the kick drum patterns aren't all interchangeable you know it's it's a little looser and yeah. then i'll give them a fourth one that's just ape shit damn it's that's, just that's going great. for it a lot of times i just give them one pass well it depends on <laughs> depends on the rate if they pay me my rate which is 200 right. mo- a lot of people want, i've noticed that in nashville too in podcasts a lot of people don't talk about money 
It's really weird. Two hundred bucks. Everybody okay. in this town is like, really right, like, what are you gentlemen. making here? And they're like, I don't know. I'm getting. It. They hide it. It's two, like two hundred um, bucks. You can get this guy to play on your song. Yeah, and and it's cool. and you know compared to a lot, of, I know what some of the, you know, some of the dudes are charging, and <laughs> you can hire me and a studio and a limo. For the, <laughs> now, per you know, song? Yeah, I know some dudes that are charging quite a bit mm. per song. But, I, you know, for me, it's 200 But if you really feel like, mm, I, I want it, but I'm not that tough. And I'm like, all right, well, you're not going to get four options and extra hits. Because, you know, if somebody needs to replace samples, something, I'll give samples. them. I, I, won't get, I won't go overboard because yeah. I don't want them just building my kit in another track. But I'll give them optional fills. Because yeah. a lot of times I'll get stuff, and I don't know if you get completed things here at Crash Studios or not. Okay, I get so. a lot of stuff where, where it's a guitar vocal and I build everything for them and then they retract everything to me. And so I will give them a pass with a shaker, tambourine, maraca, okay. that kind of stuff. And I'll burn it to a quick MP3 and I'll send it to them and they'll say, I love everything. On the bridge, don't ride the floor, Tom. Go to the bell. Right. And then that's it. See, I, since I don't get a lot of the back and forth, I usually get the, I'm hired, they send it, I do it, that's it. Yeah. Since it's that, I would like to think, uh, a lot of times I get things where the vocals aren't done. Yeah. Or they'll even have a thing where, well, I'm not sure what I want to do with the bridge or whatever. So if I do a out of a out of something, well, maybe what they're singing is duple. Yeah. And that triplet fill is going to screw everything up. Right. So I'll give them, I'll give them a big, I'll give them a couple big dumb options. So they can just, go, 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 go. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. I'm ugly. You know, I'll just <laughs> let them chop it out. <laughs> so I, I give a few options, mm. but if they're paying my rate, yeah. the 200, then they'll probably, they usually get, they get, three or, they, they get three or four with some extra hits. They get it at, you know, they get it at 48. They get, it sounds great. And I give it to them if I have to make up for my room because it's a little smaller than this. And sometimes mm -hmm. I have to do a little t -t 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 to make up for it. Yeah. I don't give it to them dry. I give it to them with that. And they can start with a good sound. Right. You know, because. They're paying for that. They're paying for. The heart. They're paying for the thing. The so I, just make, I just make it. But I don't reverb and all that. That's the, Let them. They're but the producer. Just give them the tracks and they can do whatever the heck they want. Yeah. Right. Um. Hey, so Jim, uh, Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com is my producer. He's been there since day one, actually a decade. We got some uh, questions coming in for Mr. Murphy. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Beals asks, all right, Chris, am I never invited to these just to bother you all? Hey, Chris. No, you would never bother me. Uh, what you can, you can come next time. Just bring those really cool red lights. <laughs> he's he's kind of, he, he's got all the. He's got all this stuff too, yeah. doesn't he? He's got a lot of stuff. He spins yeah. plates. Uh, no, Chris. Chris actually uh, did lighting, Light, photography, and, or something. And or? third camera on my drumming in the modern world dot com project. How's that going? He's good. good. It's he's pretty. Good. He's getting a lot. Of mailbox comprehensive. Money every year. Pretty comprehensive situation. If I put there. it into a thing where it was like I had it in a funnel, and it was um, a streaming service instead of a download service. Basically, I just said to the world, "I trust you. Download it. Take it." And you know what? It's, they did. You know what the weirdest thing is? No, it's and the thing is, is that pe the millennials are so lazy. I'll give them a code <laughs> to download it, and they go, "I don't have five. I don't have five hours to download." No, they this. don't. No, yeah. I was like, okay. They so. have five hours to go down to Lucky Strike and and sit PBR, but they they're don't have they, five hours. They're, to they're not going to download my free product that I spent so much money on to create. Oh well. I've decided that I'm going to. Uh, I, I was. I was actually considering like the stuff. Uh, you know, somebody was like, "Why don't you monetize your this feed or that your feed comedy. or whatever?" Or and I decided. <laughs> and I decided that the only thing that is, you you you, you can mon. I, I thought you can monetize the things about you that people love or people hate. Right. The 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 things that people don't care about. You're not going to make any money on that. Mm. Um, so you know. Now that now for products, it's kind of different. You have a marketing plan, but I mean, if something in you, if they if they're indifferent to towards you, you're not going to you can't monetize yourself in any way. But if they don't like you, they will. Howard Stern has made a lot of money off people that don't like him and do like him and do like yeah. him. Yeah, he's, he's made more money off people that love him, but he's made some money off people that so just despise him. He's polarizing. He's polarizing. That's that's so I've decided that my I'm building Kevin Murphy. I've I own I own drum roll. I we got some major news coming. No, up. I own a lot of websites. Of dot coms. <laughs> I own a lot of website names, and here's why: you buy them up. <laughs> <laughs> you buy them up. No, I gotta be honest. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be totally frank with the with the drumming community here in the world. Uh, some people when they drink, they 
call ex-girlfriends or they make bad choices, they eat too much or they, or they gamble online or whatever. When I get drunk, I go on GoDaddy and I buy websites. This um, is incredible. <laughs> I, so what are some ones that you're holding on to? Well, I, I just let like 12 go. You mean you just let them fall off? I the the GoDaddy lady called me and was it's so funny when they call you and they're like, "Hi, Mr. Murphy, are you still? Do you want to keep BigRightFoot.com and the Big Right Foot and Kevin Murphy Drums and and I was like, I, yes, I'm working on Kevin Murphy Drums. I'm, I'm working on official Kevin Murphy I had to buy because the guy that does the hair products is Kevin Murphy. I use them. The uh, yeah. sci-fi producer and writer for, uh, of sci-fi movies is like Kevin. Murphy. The guy that did Mystery Science Theater three thousand is Kevin Murphy. Okay. So. I needed to get official Kevin Murphy and Kevin Murphy drums. So I bought those, but I also owned official Kevin Murphy drums. Yeah, com. something. But she would, the lady was also like, "Do you have any intentions of doing anything with Rich People Don't Shit <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Wait, I bought that." She was like, "Yeah, four years ago." <laughs> Rich people don't shit. <laughs> what a story. I, I bought it four years ago. Wow, and you and, and yeah, I've what, been paying for it ever since, and I finally let it go. What is like, it per year? Like, I don't remember. It's like twenty four ninety nine, like like fifty bucks. I don't know. Oh, twenty bucks. I keep on getting a bill for like. But I had, but I had, but I had a ton of them. So it was like four hundred bucks every March, and what I was like, <laughs> what am I buying? And it was like, wow, that's incredible. Tons of. But I, then you buy it at the dot com, and then you have to get it built. One night, I thought I would. Um, and this is wasn't a joke. I was drunk, and I thought, wow, there's got to be a market for like acquiring clothing and shortening it and 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 reselling it to smaller people. And I bought little people apparel dot net dot com dot org dot biz dot us. I bought like six of those because I had some, apparel. Yeah, I had some plan that I was going to make some money reselling. Like, like, but, but who's going to shorten the clothes? Like, who's the seamstress? I, I thought I would find someone. Who, who's going to like, 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 mail it out? I'm a, I, I'm a big picture guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the idea guy. Make it happen. Yeah, wow. but, I, but so I had a bunch. Of, I had six of those that I thought I was going to make work. But I have Kevin Murphy drums and I think I'm going to do a thing where um, and the reason this came up is I'm going to monetize it in layers Yeah, and it's going to be a uh uh, free stuff you see what you see on everybody's you can click the button like you do on yours where you can hire me to do stuff from home or book me or whatever um, and get lessons and there's some content that you can get and there's going to be another level where you can interact the different levels of different interaction coming reaching the highest level that seems pretty expensive but is considerably less than two lessons a month at a hundred bucks a lesson All right which is I like it so you know somebody be like oh I'll just I'll just pay him for his website but I get lessons with him you know, via Skype. And yeah. I was like, well, I'll just yeah. do that. That's fun. To, that's a you fun know? concept. But, the, but if, they, if they pay me a little, they get my all my really bitchy opinions. Hal Bowman. I would totally shop at Little People Apparel. <laughs> Love See? Hal Bowman. See? I mean, it was, a, it was a thought. And it wasn't like a, it wasn't a crass thought. It was like a, wow, they've, you got to buy your clothes somewhere. And I'll just find somebody to hem them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Where, I don't know where little people buy their clothes. I have no clue. I bet. I bet. I bet it's a huge online business. And in my mind, I was. I was like, that's got to be an online business I can punch into. And I bought a couple. I will say this. I forget what they were. I bought a couple that ended up being band names because I thought they were just cool. And the bands contacted me, and I didn't sell them to them. I probably should have, wow. but I just gave it. Just to gave them. it to them. That's, yeah. that's really nice. You know, there was a guy bought Madonna.com years ago. She let it lapse, and a guy bought it, and he. I think he made like a few hundred grand because he stacked it with porn, and her label was just like, "Come on!" Wow. And he, but he, but he, he backed him into a corner. Like wow. I can see him making a little coin on it, but don't push him like that. That you, he really pushed. That's bad. Oh, he went for it. That's bad. That's coming back, like, right? That's, that's, that's good. Bad. That's absolutely going to come back and get <laughs> you. Bad juju. What are some other questions? We got some cool questions coming uh, up. Yeah, from actually, um, there was actually one that popped up here. Pick Rich's brain from Luke Matheson. What's up, Luke? How do you decide on sound and tone for each song you track? For instance, snare, sound, kick, uh, Tom, etc. I have a LaCroix fetish. I, I love, love that. Stuff. I have a serious problem with LaCroix. I read something earlier. It was like, drinking LaCroix is like drinking Sprite with Sprite that's wearing a condom. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. My favorite, my favorite is the coconut. I love the coconut. I like the coconut. I don't love the apricot. Um, nope, nope, nope. I like nope. the berry. That's, grapefruit. I like the berry. Berry's I don't great. love the grapefruit. The pomplamus, in other words. Yeah. Um, and I like the cran raz, and I like the orange. Um, Especially when you add vodka. Who? Yeah, it's not bad. And it's <laughs> and it's calorie less. It's calorie less. Um, what was that? How do you pick your sounds for snares? How do you get your uh, sounds and tone for different songs? For E-sessions? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, Cup, it, couple snare drums ready to go, right? I kind of have my go-to. I have a 402 with the Bonham hoops that are dipped, those brass hoops that are dipped in nickel. Oh, yeah. That has the, the secret Bonham weapon on a 402, and I have my Black Beauty that kind of rings a little too much yeah. in, in my studio. So I've got a lot. I've got some, some of the gels on it. Um, and, um, and I have a couple of copper phonics. Mm. As a general rule, Usually works out with those, and I have an old standby Ludwig Ludwig Acrylite pawn shop that Tom Bukovac gave me for my birthday. Yeah, Kevin is a Ludwig artist, so uh, yeah, I mean you can't go wrong with any of the Ludwig Mm, snare. None of those, but honestly, I had a I had a Acrylite when I was eleven, so I've you know it's always good. Uh, I have. I try to imagine if the song is just a I don't know what you do, but if the song is just a, a ward a work tape. I try to imagine it fully produced, and sometimes I'll ask them. Yeah, are you planning? Are you going with strings? I want to know how dense the orchestration the, the 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 orchestration is going to be, so I know where I can fit it. Yeah, and if they're, you know, if it's got a lot of low end, and I get I get the track, and there's like a B three that's hanging down. The left hand is really low, and there's like a five string bass where he's down on that B string, yeah. and there's like guitar guitars are maybe tuned down to D or something. Well, then I'll. I'll grab the Acrolyte or I'll grab that 402 and I'll bone them. I'll crank it up so I can get above, above. I can get above that yeah. density down low. Yeah. And vice versa. Sometimes it's like a female singer that's up in the higher registry or a male singer that's really sky. Yeah. And I'll, um, you know, a thin picking pattern, like one of those Rickenbach, like a, a Rick yeah. picking pattern or something. And there's a lot of, mel- there's something kind of high. Well, then I'll tub it and I'll... Uh, you can just like... Start tuning those, uh, turning those knobs until the drum sounds good and sit, is sitting in the track. You know, and and you know? and you know, I have my, I have my, you, you have your root EQs and your big fat snare drum. If it needs to sound like a, a, a heartache tonight, if it needs to sound dead, you just toss that on there. Uh, yeah. The root EQs are more like tea towels. So I, I usually try to figure out what the song is going to be. And a lot of guys don't think about this. I don't know if you do it, but I also try to decipher what the lyrics are. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the, the moral of the story is play musically. Like, emulate the great drummers that have come before you. You can't go wrong by, you know, studying Bonham and Ringo and Stan Lynch and Jim Keltner and, and Picaro and John Robinson <coughs> and, and, you know, have these guys in your back pocket so you can quickly reference them. And then I have go-to drums. I have go-to drums that are, um, you know, we go and, you know, and I have Johnny, my Johnny, my engineer. You have a few. Yeah. Is that an acrylite down there that's painted? That's an acrylic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's got I some, like this guy down some here. Some Nobles and some Rogers. Yeah, and some, that's a sexy little Rogers over yeah. there. We start thinking about we have drums everywhere. It's like I have drums and I tripped over one earlier today in my have, house. Yeah, I have like drums and sound check. Drums on a on a uh, on a moving semi. I have drums in Los Angeles. I have drums in my home studio. I have drums out in hermitage in a warehouse that gets shipped in for sessions. It's like, and I got rid of like ten sonar drum sets. I helped. I helped McHugh move his studio stuff into a storage locker. Yeah, it's just drums. So many. It's drums. a nightmare. It's just drums. <laughs> just, just, it just. It's fun. So many it was drums. Com- after a while. It was comedy. It was high comedy of like how much? How many nine thousand pedals do you need? You've only got two feet. Yeah, like just pedals just, everywhere. You got to be covered. He's covered. Um, what else we were talking I, about? I, I, we, I also. I will say this. I like to play the lyrics. Um, so if it's a song about divorce or obvious some sort of breakup or whatever, it's not going to be some high, ringy, high pitch like Garibaldi snare that's boned up. That no, doesn't sound like divorce to me. It's going to be darker. It's going to be sad. It sounds like a muted thing or or a kind of a honk. And percussion is fun. That's like one time you hired me <clears> to play <throat> percussion on a record that you played drums on and produced for Josh Grayson. And when I was went in to listen to your tracks, that's when we realized how many of our choices are so similar. Especially then. Oh my God, we were doing the... I was like, I would have done that exact fill. It was scary. And I'll tell you what, looking back, and ultimately that... uh, That was 10 years ago, 2008. And not to get too uh, deep into that or or say anything disparaging, but I I was done. And I turned it in and went out with Hauser. I'd already started working with Hauser. And... uh, You produced the finished produced record for Josh Grayson. Yeah, and I was done. And the artist, unbeknownst to me, went back and got the hard drives and added a bunch of stuff. But prior to then, that, that, that ended up making it not as good, in my opinion. Yeah. But again, my opinion, we were co-producers, and he was the artist. So, yeah. you know, if he wanted to throw Raider a little more money to come in and rage on a few songs, Danny that was Raider, his, yeah. that was his, yeah. uh, his prerogative, and I don't begrudge him that. But I, I think it made it a little hectic. 
Um, but <clears throat> when I was done with that and I was like, wow, I feel good about the drumming and I feel, I feel, I felt good about everything. That was the actual album where I thought, I don't want to produce and drum anymore. If I'm going to produce, you just if have, I'm going to produce, hire a drummer. I'll hire, I'll hire, you know, I'll hire Ben, I'll hire you, I'll hire Rob, I'll hire, I'll hire a friend. Yeah. If I can afford it, I'll hire Shannon or McHugh or whoever, you know, whatever. Um, but I, when I was drumming, great, I was missing some of the production cues. Yeah. And when I was producing, I was really on it. I, I, I wasn't, I was playing right. And there was a couple of songs where it was like, man, the drums are good, but they're not inspired. Right. They don't. <clears throat> and this wasn't one of those things where it was like fire through five songs before, before one. It really, we really did take the time to do it. And if you're going to take the time to do it and it's not just inspired, then you, then you blew it. Yeah. If it's not inspired and you knocked out 10 demos today, well, good job. You got through them. Yeah. But I had hours with each song, mm -hmm. and there's a couple where it didn't like it wasn't just on fire, and I was like, oh, it wasn't on fire because I was, I was, I was grabbing all these production right. cues. Yeah. And had I done just one or the other, and had somebody else playing drums, and called Dave Harrison, and just like Dave, don't do that, Phil. He would have went, all right, got it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have enough friends that know my demeanor where if I was like, yeah, Rich said Phil sucked, do another one. Yeah. You'd be, I don't like that one. Or even, not even suck, hey, I don't like that going into the bridge. I have enough friends who wouldn't get their feelings hurt to be like, well, what do you like? Oh, well, there's going to be triplets sung, so just not, just something triplet. Okay, cool. Done. Got doom doobs. Yeah, done. I should have done that. Um, it's good. Um, the yeah. album didn't do particularly well, but that, I don't think that had a whole lot. I think that had a lot to do with well, relationships and, and other things. Produced but it was a, a good, it was a really great Bon Jovi record. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> produced a lot of records that have not been heard. You know, what's funny is four or five of the tunes at that time, Josh had, uh, you know, me and, me and Tony, uh, who, who, was, who passed away a few years ago, but, but Tony was in that band and got me into that group. It's raging. Um, we got all of our buddies from Virginia to come down. I don't know what's going on. You're, you're Basically, what happened is that my phone, the live feed shut off, and then all of a sudden, I had to refresh this to okay. come to Party. Um, Tony and I started hiring all of our Virginia buddies to come down and replace, because, you know, you guys took Mikey Fry from Grayson. Right. We replaced Mikey Fry with Mike Meadows from Virginia. Right. Who... And, and, and Darius took John Mason from Grayson, and he was replaced with our buddy Amos from Virginia. A lot of so then, hopping. So then Amos yeah. left to, for Taylor, right. and we hired my buddy Tripper from Virginia, and then Amos hired Mike for Taylor, and then we hired my buddy Devo from Virginia. So, so, Virginia, so is, there's something in the water there, right? Tell us about Central Virginia, tell Charlottesville. Us about, like, you know, where you're, like, well, the reason about, I brought that up was because eventually that. we ended up with Brad Tercy, right. who is a big part of the, the, you know, he's Old Dominion, you know, he's yeah, yeah. the guitar player, one of the primary writers, he and Matt and, and Brad, his first four or five cuts as a writer, me and Josh gave him those cuts. He wrote with Josh on right. that record. Yeah. Those were his first four or five in Nashville. And now he's got, a handful of number ones with Old Dominion. And what do you mean you gave him those cuts? Did you co-write no, those songs? No, no. Well, I co-wrote a couple of them. No, but yeah. I. But he co-wrote a couple of songs, and I was like, "Yeah, put those on the record." So we 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 facilitated his yeah. first album cuts. Now, isn't that isn't that with your your history in that area? Didn't you grow up like next to like Carter Bruford and Dave? Well, Grohl? Down, yeah. It, well, Grohl's sister, I think, still lives in Charlottesville. Yeah. Um, I grew up in two towns because I was in a car accident, and my parents were like. <laughs> If he stays in this rural town, he's dead. Let's move him. So I was in outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. Yeah, too much Virginia. time on your hands? Like Devil's Playground kind of a thing? Oh, I am the Devil's Playground. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Central Virginia, near Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, until I was 16. And then beyond that, I spent a couple of years in right outside D.C. in Arlington. So uh, by the time I got to Arlington, I was where like all the punk like Black Flag and Fugazi yeah. and all those bands were like right down the street from my where I, my grandparents' house where I lived. Wow. And when I grew up you know, near Charlottesville, it was in that area was all everybody I just mentioned grew up there and or close by. Like right. Tripper is from like an hour down the road, God. and uh, you know Carter was like right over there. Yeah, you know, um, and. Yeah, shit. I mean, like lots of people that so I he was in the water there, man. Yeah, and it was funny. I taught a couple of high schools in Virginia Beach uh, uh, for Drum brief, lines briefly, and, stuff. and apparently Pharrell was was at one of those schools while you were teaching there. I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, because you know when I saw, when I saw taught at Lubbock High School, 
where Buddy Holly went. The year was 1993. Okay. 92-93. Natalie Maines was in school there before she joined the Dixie Chicks. Oh, was she in the band? Not, was she, was not, she a band no, geek? She, she was just, no, she was in the band because I, I would have taught her. Yeah, that would have been amazing. That would have been really crazy. But then I went, then I moved <laughs> to Dallas, Texas, and I ended up playing with an early version of the Dixie Chicks. And then when they lost their lead singer, they were a cowgirl band with an upright bass player and my friend Tom playing brushes. They they added, added uh, Natalie and Sony Records. And then it happened. Yeah. yeah. She was wow. The, she was the missing ingredient, I guess. Yeah, my high school in Arlington that I went to, I didn't go to school with her. I, by the time I got there, she had just left, but it was uh, Sandra Bullock's. Mm. The, and I just apparently like she had left the school and like right before I got there. The girl but, next door. She's the perfect girl next door. She's Actress she's type. super cute, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm trying to think here of some other things that. Yeah, I there, but to, there is something in the water. In, there is something in, in the water there in Virginia. And, um, I want to talk about your hot sauce. But what about Tonic? That was one of my favorite bands ever. Was what what was that I... period? And how long were you with them? Tell us about that journey. <laughs> I was with them. Uh, for 11 years. Yeah. It's um, a long time, but what mm-hmm. were the years? What was that time span? 99 till 11, basically. So yeah. almost 12, you know, 99 oh to 10, 11. Um, and then 99, was- 2000, I don't, I'm not sure, till 10 or 11. And the last few years was kind of, uh, it was spotty. Yeah. Um, and Emerson lives here. Right? Emerson lives here. Right. Jeff and Dan live in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And... Um, they're still going. It's just that they have I, they don't have a ton of shows, and inevitably they fall on Saturdays. And I don't. Miles was doing it, wasn't he? He is. I think he. I think he still does occasionally. He's Miles McPherson. Yeah. Um, and I know that Casey Todd did some last year. Um, I Go think ahead. basically it's and now it is Emerson and whoever else. In the band can do it because right. Jeff Russo is has a studio. Is, well, more than that, he is very successful now as he's one of the hot guys doing uh, soundtracks and oh, composing film and for TV. for film and TV. Right. So I don't know what movies he's done, but he does Legion, he does Fargo, he does um, that's amazing. Uh, Night of, he does the new Star Trek Discovery. So he's very he's very busy. He getting- is kicking. Ass and don't think for a second I'm a sci-fi geek. So don't think for a second I didn't text him like, "Let me play a floor tom on a <laughs> Star Trek episode." You got something, it. and he was like, "Get out of here, hit a drum," you know, like. So he's doing great, but I don't think it allows him to, you know, go on stage. You know, yeah, he's got I, a couple of kids. His, yeah. um, um, I got a friend, Sean Staples, that's a <laughs> film and TV composer, and he actually does all the background music for my little uh, acting clips, okay. like the little short films and stuff. And so he keeps telling me, man, you gotta go, you gotta get out there and meet Jeff, man, and stop by his studio and all this. I've never been able to do it. But. Jeff's, uh, you so. know, what's Jeff. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud of him. I, I, I had I, I've, that's that's something that I've always wanted to do was compose for TV, and I didn't know how to. And I guess you know, first things first, you'd need to be in LA. Yeah. And for me, I had I came here and not LA because I. I had a young daughter at the time. Now, Matt, now Maddie, she, turned, yeah, yeah, she turned 21 last month. Wow. Yeah. Um, but at the time, when I came down here. All grown up. She was not all grown up. And her mom and I were separated mm-hmm. um, soon after my, I started gigging down here. And I just, I didn't want to go to Los Angeles. And, and so I, I, but I'm proud of Jeff for doing it because I wouldn't have even known how to get into that. I don't know how he got his foot in the door. And Dan, the bass player for Tonic, manages like, one of the Jonas Brothers. He like manages. So I now think. he's a manager. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was like the drummer for. Um, who was the drummer for um, Extreme? Paul Gary became a huge manager. Godsmack. Uh, Godsmack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You have a percentage of a band like Godsmack. It's great. It's probably doing all right. You're doing good. So I, anyway, I I was uh, I met those dudes. I was in a, my last band that I owned really. That was my part. I was part of a band was Earth to Andy, and we were on Warner Brothers. Ah, oh, yes. We uh we had. We never got our own big legs because there was a lot of failures at the label. Um, but we opened up for Tonic. We opened up for Stone Temple Pilots. We opened up for Our Lady Peace. We had all these really cool bands, and we loved Tonic. And one time, Emerson was like, hey, man, give me your phone number. You know, we, we're not sure what Remy's going to do. And their drummer at the time, and he called me a little while later, you know, a month later, and asked me if I wanted to fill in for a month till they could find a guy. Yeah. And I was like, Sure. Eleven years later. Eleven years later. So, I like, was Earth and Andy was the, your was your <laughs> thing, man, and that's how you met the guys in Tonic from doing double bills with them. Yes, 
great. Um, and at the time, I was doing a little bit of Earth Andy and Jimmy's Chicken Shack. Earth Andy was being kind of uh, we were we were desperately trying to get off of Warner Brothers at the time. We were so we were causing problems purposely to get off of the label, and it worked. And then we didn't. We weren't a band really. We I, can, I, I can see you doing. We that. couldn't really dig our way out. I can of, see you causing problems. But <laughs> now, the, what's for Kevin Murphy fans out there? Can they look up Earth Andy, Jimmy's Chicken yeah. Shack? Egypt, these bands. Yeah, all of them are on iTunes. Spotify. Egypt, Egypt was yeah. Egypt was um, was kind of like at the from the early '90s on until the early 2000s. It stopped really. I mean, we just got back together occasionally. We do like you did a record last year, right? Or no? uh, we we not a record, but mm-hmm. we did a we do shows every once in a while, yeah. and and they're harder and harder to do as we get older because the guitar player works for the Day Matthews Band and and plays with them on a, uh, yeah. a couple songs a night and. You know he's busy and like the, you know so it's harder to get together. But that band was kind of like that the, at the the front edge of that soul funk metal like hybrid uh, Fishbone. Uh, I always uh, liked Fishbone. Uh, Faith No More, like that yeah. whole thing in the early '90s. They were the DC. They were the East Coast version of the the, the tip of the East Coast spear of that. Yeah. Um, and Earth Andy after that was more uh, of like Soundgarden with a lot of harmonies. Yeah. Um, and you guys did a lot of grassroots touring, like like mm-hmm. a fifteen passenger van taking all shifts. Yeah. So so you you were active playing music professionally since you were what eighteen years old. Yeah, and I went to college for three years <clears throat> where I wasn't gigging as much. I mean, when I was where was the college? Where was the college? East Tennessee State University. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doctor Randy Sanderback was my drum instructor. Okay. Uh, same guy that taught East Tennessee. State. Same guy that taught Dave Harrison when Dave was in WVU. Nice. Yeah. And and Will Ellis, William Ellis, William yes. Ellis. And I think I've reached out to them about me stopping by. How far away is the school? Five, five hours, mm. four, I don't know, four or five. Um, <laughs> and Randy retires this year. But at any rate, I, for, except for those years, I mean, I was already doing gigs in DC and stuff when I was younger, yeah, and uh, punk gigs and and sitting in with people. And so my sitting in was actually in like. The, the original 930 Club, which was not a whole hell of a lot bigger than this room. And yeah. it was blood on the floor after the punk shows. Wow. And I would, and just like people playing sit punk, in. Playing punk music. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you think I want to do? Got to, got to, got to, mm-hmm. got to, got to, got to, got to, that thing? Yeah. Wow. And you'd be at shows where it's like. People moshing. Oh, yeah. I've, I mean, I've. I've Anarchy, bro. Yeah. I, I uh, <laughs> got my nose broken at a carnivore show, which was the band before Typo Negative that Peter Steele was in. And, um. God, so playing. I've this, played with HR and those guys you're from playing just Bad Brains late country music and, now, man. Yeah, how mm-hmm. did you get the country? Yeah. Well, it's, it's just right. But, but yeah, I mean, I left school. Uh, eventually, I went to Randy, Randy Sanderbeck and I was like, hey, man, my buddy Nathan Brown, my best friend from high school, and he was in a band called Everything. They had a song called Who Got the Hooch. Remember that tune? It's on the Waterboy soundtrack. So they were doing okay at the time. And he was like, hey, man, I got this the band. Waterboy yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty awesome song, though. And he was like, man, um, and they were doing shows like 311, and they were doing great. Um, and he was like, he had a gig for me for a band called Full Stop that was in Atlanta. And he was like, man, do you want to leave school? And I went and talked to my <laughs> drum instructor, Randy. What did he Ra- say? What'd Randy was like, man, he, was, he has this real slow way of speaking. And he goes, hey, man, I've been waiting for you to come in here and tell me this. I've been waiting for you to leave since you got here. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, what? He, he politely explained to me that I was not going to be a good band director. <laughs> I was, Were you studying music education? I was studying. I wanted to be a composer or a band or a or a educator, and he was like, "That's neither is really, you know." He was like, "Composer maybe, but you're not you're not diligent. And you're like you're not going. You're not showing up to your theory classes. You're because I was working. I was a bouncer. So I was working to five. You're a bouncer at nightclubs, yeah. and then going to school <laughs> yeah. and playing drum games. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then and, and I was really inebriated a lot. So of and if, now, okay, now if, if Maddie's twenty one. I'm trying to do the math. Like, when did you get pregnant? Well, I never what, got pregnant. What were you doing? But you know, when you're in a couple, you get, um, you get pregnant. 97. Well, she was born in 97. So <coughs> oh, late okay. 90s, mid 96. Okay. But in 93 was, I was, when, I t- was when I told Randy I was bailing. And he was like, man, you should. So I rolled and I played with Full Stop. And then I moved from Full Stop to Egypt. And then Egypt to Earth to Andy. And then, uh, so sometime around Egypt to Earth to Andy, Allison and I had Maddie. Um, and lived in Charlottesville, mm-hmm. and I would do, you know, 
we would hub out of there and rock touring was different like we'd be gone for months it's hard, so with, it's it was, hard with a newborn right? it was hard on my on on allison it was hard on on are you guys on okay terms? oh we're, we're we're great friends now we're right. super amicable um and it helps that now Madison. I is, guess you have to be because of. Well, I mean, we were tried, even uh, earlier, but when you know we've had our rough spots, but Madison, you know, you got a kid, you got to hold it together, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, you got to try not to be an asshole. You know? <laughs> Sometimes it don't work, but you got to at least put the effort into right, it, right, you know. Right. Um, and it worked, and we're cool. And then you know later on, before we were divorced, I started working out of here because I was uh, tonic. Emerson and Dan and Jeff were just kind of burned out, and. Um, and when they were like, hey, we're going to take some time off. And at the time, it, I was okay with it because I was pissed off at them because they used Warrenker to do their record instead oh. of me. The, 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 the next record uh, oh, the called one. Head On Straight. Oh, Head On Straight, yeah. And I was pissed. I was, sugar was the one that I was just singing. Right? Yeah, okay. that was Sugar. That was their probably their most popular? Their most popular was Lemon Prey, their first record. The one that was on the um, sugar, American Pie Sugar, right? and that, that soundtrack, from what I understand, that soundtrack kind of kind of cannibalized their sales which bummed them out because uh, sugar was a phenomenal record right. but not all of it got heard because people heard that song and bought that soundtrack instead of the album when so they never got to hear so they CDs. never got to hear the album sugar sugar which is there's it's a phenomenal record as good as lemon parade but lemon parade was stacked with a bunch of hits on it including if you can only see which was the big the big, the monster. big monster but yeah when they did head on straight they used warrenker and i was furious I was so pissed off. Did they give you dudes. reasons? No. 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 Um, but uh, so when they were like, yeah, we're going to take, take a break, I was like, fine. <laughs> and unfortunately, I didn't use the I, – I, I will say I don't regret anything, but the one mistake I think I made is I, right when I started with them, 99, 2000, whatever, I should have moved here to L.A. right then. I should have just gone right then. I should have been like, nope, sorry, Charlottesville, I'm out. But they were, the travel was good. They, you know, they, I, I flew, I flew straight out of Charlottesville. You know, to the gig. Tiny little planes to go to the gig. Like I was kind of styled. So I could be home with my kid and not take her out of her Montessori school and not, Allie was working a couple okay. of jobs. Okay. So okay. Everything I was like, oh, I'll just stay in, in Virginia and I'll work it from here. And ultimately when they were like, yeah, we're taking a break. And I was like, fine. And hung up. I was like, shit, what am I going to do now? So I ended up working construction with my buddies for a couple of years. Oh, we have those stories. I've done construction. Light construction. I will tell you this, but th here's the fun thing. And if people were like, I want to make it. They should remember this story. I want to make it. I want to make it. Well, you better, you, you better define what make it is because I can tell you this. I went and did Leno because right in the when Head on Straight did come out, we started doing TV and stuff. I for, was it Leno? I forget what it was. I think it was Leno. We did. We and we weren't working a lot. We were just doing occasional stuff, and they didn't have me on salary at that at that time yeah. because they weren't working a lot. So it was like show pay and whatever it was. It wasn't enough. And I was still doing my construction. I flew home after Leno because you know people think you're tape. People think you're you're live. You're live. At it's, at it's at five o'clock. But you yeah. know you know when you tape it and you're at, you're eating dinner. You've already eaten dinner and you're on your third drink when it airs. Right. <laughs> and you're like, hey, there well, we are. I was home. I, I flew back. Right. I caught a flight out, and I was seven and a half hours after it aired on the East Coast, I was running a jackhammer in Charlottesville. <laughs> <laughs> That's good exercise. Just, just watch your toes. Yeah, just getting rattled, just running a 90-pound running running air jack. That can't be good for your body. It wasn't. It hurt. But, you know, I had to do it at the time. But So, we, we, you know, we piecemealed some stuff together, and... Then it got less and less and less, and eventually I started working more with Grayson. Um, yeah. And, well, the moral uh, of the story is you have paid some dues. Well, Tony you, called me. You've always been in the game, yeah. and, and you've always had a job. I got called by a buddy, and he said, fly down here, and I did. And my first show with Josh was at that, remember the, uh, when it used to be called the Ford Amphitheater in Tampa? The Charlie Daniels, mm -hmm. the, he did his big birthday bash yeah. thing every year, and it was like a pile. I didn't know anyone from Nashville except for my buddy Tony, who you remember, Tony, and yeah, he's, yeah. he's passed on now. But Tony called me and was like, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, get down here, I got a gig for you. Just like so easy, and I was like, there's so many gigs. Okay, Come on. sure. So I flew down, and I, did, I met Josh. Um, uh, it, it, on the on my way up the ramp to the stage, you met the guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I played the show, and it was like the funny thing is, thank God, 
I didn't know anyone because I'm playing and I look over and I remember now the first Nashville guy I met and who saw me play was Pat McDonald. Yeah. And God help me if I'd have known how if I'd have known how nasty he was a- when I was just just stumbling through these grace and tents, yeah, yeah, yeah. just just barely getting through them. Yeah. Thank God I didn't know that bald guy. How good that bald yeah, guy Pat, was. I was um, watching. Yeah, for the, for the if you guys don't know, but Pat was Pat is a surgical drummer. He's so precise. <laughs> He's a so drummer. clean and so precise. <laughs> so clean. Do we have some questions or what? Yeah, well, how are we doing on time? Are we doing good. Uh, we're pushing you know about twelve minutes to the hour. Okay, twelve minutes. Uh, Am I talking too long? No, no, Sorry. it's good. We usually do one hour. It's good. Yeah, we do about an hour. Tyler Jimenez, uh, Rich and Kevin. It's probably Jimenez. 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 <laughs> No, none wider than Jim. Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get in there, man. Come on. And I'm a voiceover guy. I should know this. <laughs> Jimenez. I'm looking to move to Nashville in the near future. Outside of having a few connections, I don't know much about the city. Where are some of the best areas slash clubs to meet people and make connections or any jam opportunities to play with other musicians? I love it. Town? Great question. This is what I tell everybody. Here it is in a nutshell. You go down Lower Broadway. There's two streets. It's such a unique place because... There's club after club after club after club, and there's live music from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m., 365 days a year. Then we have other places like the Sutler, 12th and Porter, 3rd and Lindsley. Now we have Rudy's, Lindsley, if you like jazz. If you like jazz, there's the Rudy's. There's, you know, 3rd and Lindsley is fantastic. Um, there's the Basement, the Basement East. There's all these live, all these great places to see bands. I- Play. If I may weigh in, I had a lesson earlier today with a young man named Giuseppe Spargo, who is a badass little drummer. And he's a young man. He's moving up from Cabo. He moved here this week. Cabo. Yep. Huh. I, I want to move. If I was in Cabo, I, I would not Cabo. leave Cabo. <laughs> I want to move that direction. <laughs> um, I should have called him ahead. Just like, let's just swap Let's houses. trade. Um, but I was telling him, uh, well, I said to him this, um, and this uh, is applicable. Use the connections and the meeting people as a way to gain comfort and friends and introduce yourself for sure and get into those those jam opportunities or opportunities where you may uh, be able to play for somebody. But they cannot be everything. A lot of people here now, it's all about the connection and it's all about they're, they're, they're racking up who they know. Right. How many people with blue check marks they can get in their friends list or how many Instagram followers they can have <laughs> and they're not putting in the work. Right. And they're not getting here. And as I told Giuseppe earlier, I was like, man, you can play anything. We're going to work on your tolerances. We're going to record you, and I'm going to beat you to death on where your grace notes are and whether or not you're pushing on your way out of out of phrases and yeah. whether you're shorting or whatever. I can't – I don't have – he plays like Wally. He's got all these licks. I, I can't even catch him, but I can I can teach him that. Who's Wally? You don't know Wally? Oof. He plays for Cam. Oh, he's – Filthy. Oh, wow. Filthy drummer. <laughs> Good God. That kid wow. is disgusting. Okay. It's, it's unbelievable. It's disgusting. He's so good. But, but these guys that have these, this modern, these chops. modern chops, like I can teach them what mid, guys in their mid 40s know. Right. So, but I told him, your work is going to be, yeah, meet those people, you know, get some, make some friends, but. Your work is going to be, can you play tastefully and appropriately and dynamically? Can you play what's right? You know, if you make this all about your followers, you're going to be one of those guys that's got 15,000 followers and can't keep a gig mm-hmm. or no one cares about. Um, you're better off, you know, just playing solid and being cool all the time. Every time somebody sees you, they're like, every time I see that dude, he's just killing it every time. He's just nailing it to the floor. Consistency. That's where it's at. Yeah. So... For that question, I would say, yeah, hit Lower Broadway, get anything that sounds cool. And if you can meet some of the people that have been around for a while, that's great too. You know, meet them for coffee, great if, if the opportunity arises. But as a general rule, you just have to keep showing up. Eventually, uh, uh, this is a war of attrition more than it is a war of talent, especially now. And if you can pay real dues and earn real skills and be a real player and not a chump, that just gets you higher up the food chain but really it's just did you not stop i think being honest with yourself is first self-awareness yeah. self-awareness you got to know where you're at and what you know we all know and that's not a, a quality thing either you know like there's a lot of bands that are, sound the way they sound because it wobbles mm-hmm. 
If Seven Nation Army was perfectly in time, it wouldn't sound right. It would not sound right. And I've had sessions where you they want it to sound like an indie thing, and they right. want it to be a little wobbly, and I can't. Right. So I have to set my kid up left-handed really? and play it cross. Don't open. Play it literally like a left-handed drummer because I'm not good enough. Wait a minute. Like play it so I'm not good enough to go like, if I do this, I can do that all day long right. as, as, as accurate as I want. Right. But I can't go, hear how more indie that sounds? Because my le- I'm sh- I'm a shitty left-handed drummer, <laughs> so, so you disrupt your playing style. I disrupt my playing wow. style to make it make it wobble. Man, I would just I would just yeah I would just try to pretend I was Johnny the eighth grade drummer. I, I can't. Wow. Um. So the th- the thing is, you got to be aware and go. It doesn't matter. Like you don't have to be Virgil Donati. Right. You can be on any any part of the spectrum. Yeah. And still make it, but you damn well better know what you are mm-hmm. and play your strengths and use your voice. Yeah. If you have a voice, that makes up for all the fast grace notes. Yeah, you know what's really funny is that the, the, I don't know what it is, but you know, like a, a couple of years approaching fifty, and I am more comfortable. My, it was always my life goal to be the most stylistically diverse. You, I will be able to play convincingly anything you think <laughs> of me. But now I'm just really comfortable in what I do. With Sutter and I were talking about it. We're like, you know what? I'm not going to learn. Go- I'm not going to learn gospel chops. Because I don't want to sound like that. I, well, it's the and, first time ever in my life I've said, I don't want to work on that. Well, I'll tell you that. I'll, that tell, you what, I'll tell you what. Uh, using, speaking of those, the reason, if I was going to learn gospel tropes, which, which I don't like, the, the, I don't use that terminology, because it's basically just a natural extension of what Weka was doing. Right. So if I, if I were interested in that, I would have learned it when Festival Day Ritmo was out in 91. Or right. Well, I, I stole some of that stuff. And, I, I used a little. so fast now and the way they're grouping I everything. And just I, like, I watch Ronald Bruner's videos and it's just funny to me. Like, I can't, so, I don't, so I don't even though. understand what that guy's I, doing. I, I he's a it's, lunatic. Um, and Eric. And, you know, um, I like the guys that don't blast it as much that just have it in there and just occasionally go oh my god wow just chuck it go. and just blow and just blow up the floor tops <laughs> and then go back i like that yeah. more than just the fury yeah um and then you watch a guy like chris coleman and you're just like wow that's the most muscular aggressive thing i've ever laid my eyes on mm-hmm. and it's precise and it's perfect and it still feels good right that's where you should go with this but that's not where I want to go yeah. with this because like I was if it's never not precise guy. and it doesn't feel good, then and it's I, just and, garbage, and I can't pull it off. Then it's you're just hacking. Yeah, if you're just it, it, and I see a lot of those dudes, a lot of the dudes, like the guys I just listed, they all have a quality of sound that's kind of here. Right. But there's a lot of younger dudes that are coming up that are trying all that where they're 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 robbing their quality of sound for the sake of speed and impressive like crossovers and well, it's stuff. What's interesting? The new generation when they sit down on a drum set at Forks Drum Closet to test something out, they are they immediately start off playing thirty second notes. Yeah. Well, they're also. So the, and that's also kind of remember, Trey, of, remember I remember when I saw Trey Gray 20 years ago and he had all the gigs in town it was just like just happy Midwest pocket that's just, why he had all the gigs in he town he had all the gigs yeah. he was just smiling on you know why face. he had all the gigs in town because when the singer male or female was in front of him singing it felt good they, they were never like what's going on yeah did, you, did the what? drums fall off the what riser what was that <laughs> They never once turned around. They never once turned around and asked what was that. And they never, while they were singing, holding out a note. You have to think from their perspective. I think about that with Randy when I used to. I was playing a lot a couple I pretend, of years I ago I'm when we had the loops yeah. and the click and uh, everything was just like my my, my machine was be, yeah beating me. And I was like I was bored and I was angry that I had to play with this shit and I was like playing lots of fills and stuff. And I one day I realized that Randy's seventy five feet away, way out an ego ramp. By himself, and he he's a loud singer. He right. hits a lot of big long notes, and he's pretty impressive. And he's like, man, and he's belting this note. And I was like, there's no way in hell he knows where one is right. with this fill I'm doing. It was like, and it was nasty. And I loved that fill, and I did it every night. And then one day I was like, there's no way he knows where one is. He never said anything there's about no, it. No, no, he never said anything to it. I think he just like kind of got out when I hit when he heard a cymbal. You know, but I thought to myself, there's no way he knows. Yeah. He can't. I don't really know where one is. He can't possibly know. I don't really I'm know. I'm not 100% on where one yeah. is. He can't. There's no way he knows. That's he's, really funny. He's halfway across the arena, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's what made me go, you know what? If it doesn't, if that feels good. Now, you know, if you look at uh, Eric doing that thing when he did that Missy Elliott song. Oh, that's amazing. Just, you're just like. 
So musical. Oh, dun, 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 dun. I just want to throw things at that He's kid. So good. He's so good. You know, and then you do look at Ronald Bruner. And you're like, I didn't know people could do things quickly like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, it is great to look at, mm-hmm. but since it wasn't my thing, I never learned it. And a lot of kids now. They are. I mean, go, we, we could. They're going for the juggling the fire. We, we could do it. <laughs> I mean, strong. I could. I could do. I could. St- I could start out slow and I could work my way up. But they, a lot of people now are like, I want to juggle chainsaws, and because that's what people will like it on Instagram, and I'll get a, you know, fifty thousand followers. You know what's it's scary like, is we have to use Instagram. We have to. But <clears throat> what if it goes away? All the effort and it's gonna go away. MySpace going away. It's gonna be replaced by something else. Well, it'll be you know, Facebook will end up just basically state run social media and Instagram will be pictures of puppies and, and drum solos state run social media uh, like, like just, there's a jam on the 405 no, it, yeah, it'll, no it'll basically be just like you know it'll be just the propaganda war oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know. but but you know hard work is never going to not pay right. in some way yeah if you want to learn a skill you can learn it for me I think what I was just saying is at the risk of sounding like an old guy like I don't want to sound like an old guy but the idea is that I'm just comfortable <laughs> finally whether you call it a luxury or uh, as a result of my efforts, I'm just happy with the way I play the drums. Well, and let's you know, be honest. I'm we just... are also, I, I will say this to the young man that, that, that asked that question. Anybody else that's Go to like, the clubs. Go to the clubs. Crash and, parties. And anybody that's like. And also make your own try. Because a big mistake <sighs> is they're trying to infiltrate the current, like a bass player comes to the guy like, I need to meet Eddie Bears and Chad Cromwell Gray. They're not going to hire you. <laughs> you need to meet drummers your own age and create that. Like this thing that we did, like, with you know, say what you want about the three kings. We did it 18 years together, playing together. Well, and you didn't get there you know? by trying to, you know, try to bump off M- M- McHugh or Morrow or Eddie. Like, I want to wedge my way in and get this Jimmy Lee, get with Slos or yeah. get with Rhodes. Like, you got the calls. The calls will come to you as yeah. you as you. Like when I there. see those guys, which we're, it's a ple- we're pleasantly surprised, but they're working with their guys their age and their circle. When you majority, started, majority you, you had to you had to find your your yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that a lot of uh, guys and, and girls that are trying to do this for a living, they 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 don't really have a good idea of what making it is. And they are um, a, is, little, well, a little delusional. It's it, you know for but making you're, it. You're meaning like by you know when they're like buying when, a house when they're like I want to do it. Oh. You know they they it's is that making it? Well, you know I don't know because a lot of people will think that making it is doing what Rich does, and they don't really realize. Yeah, well, you know Rich plays as a, as a general rule. You, in my opinion, you now yeah, Kenny is huge, and Tim and Faith are huge. But if you think about it. Really, you and Kent are the only two dudes in town that are playing drums for an artist that can fill a stadium by himself. It's crazy. That's kind of it. In country. Mm-hmm. Um, Chesney, yeah, but he's, you, you never know because he's always got like five other big, awesome bands on those bills. Yeah, you know? the stadiums we did so, were with Chesney. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's like Sean Paddock, you, Kent. That's kind of it. The rest of us, in varying degrees, are part of the bill. You yeah. know. So, is that making it? Well, sure. That doesn't mean you haven't any strife in your life, right. and doesn't have doesn't mean you you haven't had problems. You know, at times paying a bill or buying this or you know working on that. Trying to so drives, we, we, people you know. need to really define what they want. <laughs> you just want notoriety. Well, if you just want notoriety, well then you know go ahead and get your get your Instagram fans, and they'll they'll kiss your ass every day, and they'll they'll like everything you post and tell you you're awesome, and even when you're not awesome, they'll let you know you're awesome, and you can sleep at night. The rest of us, I you know, you, you got to get some balance of yeah. you have to know like, okay, I've created, to me, making it is I've created a voice. I have some, there's, there's at least a percentage of the people that know who I am, have respect for the work I've put in. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm paying at least some of my bills. Right. Now, LA, Nashville doesn't pay near what other cities in the world do. Yeah. And I think that's more, that's not based on artists and management. I think that's based on the business managers. The old guard that are like, yeah, that's three hundred a day. No, it isn't. Yeah, <laughs> my house is. You, you, oh, you mean three? You mean like when eight years ago that house was one hundred and ten grand, and now it's two forty? But you want to pay less per show? Right. That's business guys. That's not artists. Yeah. I think the artists would rather not know. I think they just want to be like, hey. Uh, Rich coming back out this year? Yeah, cool. Did you guys work it out? Awesome. Right, I, right. I'm not. I, I don't know that anyone I've ever worked for knew exactly what I made. I, I think that's. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that none of them do. Right. It's business managers. But no. Well. But hey, but, you, you got a cool crib out in the the, the, uh, the cool part yeah. of Donaldson. That's 
getting the Starbucks and it's... I got to buy it. I don't want the Starbucks, but I got I got to buy my house because there's some awesome stuff going in there. But my point is, yeah, paying your bills and that's a big thing and just having some comfort. But I think the real to me making it is just enduring and not going and, ha- and not selling yourself out. And if 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 your choices are do something really thin and hollow to grab a few followers mm-hmm. or work just work yeah just just work because all the people like you're awesome that they're, they're gonna find something else to call awesome next month <laughs> have some faith in yourself listen to the people that motivate you if they're motivated by you or if they motivated by you know you and i are on the opposite ends of the motivation spectrum you're like you can do it this is how join me and I'm like, you might not be able to do it. <laughs> That's what Tully does. Yeah. You and Tully should start a podcast. <laughs> me, and Tully, me and Tully should do a It would be amazing. Thing. Tully basically says... Um, he says it's a failure business. He said, well, Kurt says it's a failure business. Yeah. And you have to be committed to it. But Tully was just like... Um, don't move here. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, people like, are like, well, hey, should I move there? Don't I, do this to yourself. Basically, what he's saying, don't do this to yourself. Well, I, he, had, he ate rice burritos and food it. lion fat-free... Refried. Hey, I was on Wick. I paid. I I I used my Wick card to get f- bread and cheese and milk for my kid when I was yeah. starting this thing. And, and at the end of the day, I, I'm I'm kind of somewhere a little less cynical than Tully on that. In that, <laughs> I would just say this: Yeah, if you want to move to town, yeah, I will tell you this, young drummer that wants to move to town. The Nashville shuffle that used to occur five years ago, where like the beginning of the year, the first couple, there was nothing happened in January, everybody was dead. But then February and March, it was this huge swirl of gigs. Rich left this, and it opened up this, and someone yeah. let, and somebody. Oh, Jim Riley called and he's got to get rid of there. Oh, Ben, see, you can't get his gig. Okay, well, McHugh MD'd this thing. They're auditioning 12 dudes. And, you know, you hustle. hustle. There was a lot of hustle in the first couple of months of the year. That doesn't happen anymore. Nope. There's like four or five things that open up a year. And all the gigs worth having that you know about, they have guys. What, are you going to knock Derek Mixon off? Right. Or Mizamore? Yeah. Or you? Yeah. Or Sean, what, what I'm gonna go? What I'm gonna go? Swipe Sean Paddock's gig. You just You're gotta, not getting. Them. You got. You got to get your own thing. You got to do what you did with with Tully and and Kurt. You got to find your dudes. Find your find the, the the girls and guys that you like, or the women and men that you like playing with. I like how you're including women in all this. It's well, great. You need to. They're, no, they're, I know. they're it's happening. They've been. They've been they they've been by the wayside for so long, and There's now so you've many got real drummers coming up. Well, I mean, and the, and the thing is, every day I'll see somebody new. And now there's, you know... Um, See my buddy Sarah play? The little Sarah? Sarah Cardio? Yeah, she's good. I have. Yeah. Um, she's all heart, man. She's how old is she? 21. She didn't have a voice yet. I'll say that. Oh, yeah. Didn't have that yet. She'll get it. She's doing rich right now. And there's a lot of those in this town. And that's well, not a slam to you, yeah. but because you have such a vocal I thing... Think she, I think she needs to go to college. You are such a... She needs to... She needs to play, she's a, play, She needs play, to dig. Play, play, she needs play. to dig. Yeah. Because you have such a, a defined voice and you have such a presence, there's a lot of people that have come here or that are trying to do it that because they haven't defined themselves yet, mm-hmm. they define themselves with a little v- version of you. Mm-hmm. And they have to keep digging mm-hmm. until they get to them. Because there's already dig, yeah. there's already a rich. Yeah. So you can start. If you want to get get going, that's great. Yeah. You can start. Um, but if she comes here, she's gonna have Megan and Sarah Tomac and people like that. And But she's so young. She's good. so yeah. so my point is you're gonna see those women playing and go, Oh and then it then yeah. what she built with you, like, oh, I like what Rich is doing, and you grab Rich is for a while yeah. and come up. Then she sees Sarah Tomac and go, Oh, well, this is a good time for you to like step aside and well, follow you know, her. So she's got, she's work she's your got way supportive up. parents and she's got... Um, and uh, she'll get her voice if she keeps trying. Just, yeah. But there's a lot of people that come to town. I don't town. know if I didn't have a voice at 21. I don't know many people that did. Yeah. This kid that I'm teaching now, yeah. But, but, and I wasn't being, it wasn't a nasty no, critique. No, 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 no. I think anyone that's trying to come and trying to work it, they need to understand. Any man or woman that's trying to do it, you know, if you want to, you know, you, you meet anyone that has a quality that you like and you want to play with them or write with them or perform with them, do it yeah. and just dig in and get hit. Part of the reason I was talking about, you know, cutting to tape and stuff like that is me, Rob Mitchell and I were talking about it earlier okay. with, with, with Juice, Giuseppe. And we were saying the times when 
you moved to a town or you went into a, you went into a session or you got on the road and you just got your nose bloodied immediately by something, those are kind of done. Um, and that's unfortunate because that, that'll teach you faster. Yeah. And now there's so many people willing to just shine you on and tell you all the great things you're doing. It's important if you're going to critique somebody to go, all right, I'm going to critique Rich's performance on this song. If you said, hey, Kevin, I'm going to play through this tune. Not right. one that I know from right. the Aldean stuff because that's all right. But, but, like, but some new thing. I wrote it last night. I'm composing it. I, need you, I want you to critique not only the drumming but the composition. I'm going to play it for you. Yes. The first thing I would do, like any judge that did WGI or DCI or, or oh, any, my God, if you've yeah. ever judged a jury, is I would make note of all the things that I liked, all the positive things that I thought you were doing. Okay. Technique-wise... You know, tone, quality of sound, feel, pocket, all those. Yeah. And then and then on the other column, I would shred you for everything I could find that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't inspired and impressive and really and compositionally appropriate yeah. and had depth. Anything that lacked depth or I would hit you for it, not because I wanted to ding Rich Redmond, because I'd be like, there's your list, because I know that you would go, ah. Oh, I want this to have depth. I want this to feel... I got to go work on it. If this isn't making him feel inspired, he's rooting for me. He's a friend. I've known him for 12 years. Yeah. If he's not feeling inspired, yeah. I got to work on it. And there's not enough people doing that, I think, right now. I think you have to search for that. So when I get to town and I'm a young, young woman, young man trying to get my teeth into the city, I'm going to go around and I'm going to be critical. If I see Lee Kelly or, or T up, I call, Tyler, I call him T up. I call him Tip because the way he talks, he was like, "Man, you seen these near? Oh Z yeah, Tyler, Tyler. You seen yeah. these near Z tips? So I call him Tip. Tips. I forget where it started, but we call him Tip, and now he's in on it. So he's now good, I, he's a good little player. No, he's a great player. Yeah. Um, you see those guys. You see Will. Uh, you see like, you know, we call him Circus Bear. But you, you know, you go down there and you find the people, and you know, you you. That's what you. You have to critique aspire them. Aspire to. Yeah, you have to find the right people to aspire to. What I did when I moved down is I, I, I transcribed and copied all of Eddie Bears and Lonnie Wilson stuff because they're some of the most recorded people of all time. And I soaked that stuff up and I played, <laughs> I played gigs where they played the, recorded all the material. I toured with acts that they were the recording drummers. I did showcases where they're note for note. I have everything. That was seeping into my DNA and it came out. It's like wearing suntan lotion. It's getting it's, in. It's own thing. No, but, and think about this too. And this is, I know we're probably pressed for time, but those young, younger people coming to town that's a drummer, maybe you are the hottest drummer in wherever the hell town you're from. And that's great. But what you probably weren't doing was thinking about things like you just mentioned Lonnie and Eddie. Now, the funny thing is, is Lonnie was on a lot of most of the Randy stuff. Right. And this album, I don't know. It, he's doing other stuff. I don't know who's doing it, but Matt Chamberlain has done some, and I've done some. And nice. who knows what the damn thing's going to sound like. But, <laughs> but there's a lot of people working on it. But yeah. the last couple records were Lonnie. And Lonnie and I couldn't play more differently. But I'll tell you what I find interesting about Lonnie and Eddie, and it's funny that you bring them up, and the younger people that are just looking Check at... Check them out, Eddie Bears, Lonnie Wilson. The younger people that are just looking at me, or you, or whoever, you know, they need to look further back and, and note there's a reason why those guys work so much, and I figured it out. It isn't that, like... I mean, Eddie was a piano player. So musical. You know, the funny thing is, Randy even, Randy told me this, because I was like, man, I was, I was asking him specifically, like, some of Lonnie's choices, I was like... Why is he doing that? Why do he play that? Yeah. And you can always hear Lonnie because there's a crash on four. Bow! Every time. And it's like, what's Lonnie doing? And Randy and I talked, and I didn't realize this until then, but Lonnie is, was a singer in a band. He's a Bandana. very successful songwriter. Yep. He's a producer. That guy isn't a drummer. He's a musician. Right. Mm. That he's, and today, he's getting paid to track some drums. But he's going to engin- he's going to arrange your song with his drum parts. Yes. And they're going to he's going to think about those lyrics. He's going to think about what you're singing. And if you're Hauser and you're blowing all the and you're blowing these big lines, this other guy behind the kit that is also a great singer is going to be thinking about that. If Eddie Bears is playing along with you and, and your piano player is doing something, you don't think he's going to notice? He's going to notice. He's a hell of a piano player. These notice. are musicians. Yeah. And I think the more you can think about that's why Jerry Rowe is great because he, he can play everything. Yeah, and for He's me, infuriatingly talented. For me, I don't I don't play a lot of other instruments, but I just try to think super musically and craft something that'll be around forever, that'll hold up, that'll make everything come together 
right? We well, have to think from their perspective, at least. Like the singer. You have to at least think from their perspective. That's what I'm doing. I was like, and, and, and when you're playing, I bet you think, I bet you can, after this many years, I know with Randy, I've been with Randy half as long as you've been with, with Jason. Yeah. And I know for a fact, if I can do it with Randy, I know that you're with Jason. You can hear the nights where, boy, he ran out that ego ramp quick. He's out of breath. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you can you can move things for him, or yeah. you can set a snare back to to let him know that he's got time for that to take that breath to hit that note or whatever. I do that with Randy, okay. especially now we don't have a click, so I'm I'm juiced. You guys got rid of it. <laughs> I'm, ju- I'm juiced. You guys got rid of it. There's no click, no loops. You guys, were, you guys were doing all that stuff. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff. Fly- well, I didn't have a lot flying in, but I had a loop, and I had clicks, and I had cues because Randy never wants to be. Locked told into what to a, do. a form. Randy does not like being told See, what to do. See, we lock into a form and go for a consistency. Randy didn't like forms. Gotcha. Randy liked to be able to just go to the bridge. And I would have to... When? Whenever he wanted. And I would have to hit a button that would take all the loops and jump them to the bridge. Yeah, I'm able to. So, and, and it would cue the guys in the band and like, man, all that crap going. But we didn't have like str- strings flown in. We didn't have a lot of stuff flown in, but we had a lot of cues that I had to jump around on. But he finally... Changed some stuff with the band, changed some of the membership, and and um, went down to a trio for a while. It was just me and John Henry on organ and and Randy, just like this weird avant-garde country thing. And now there's uh, uh, Jackson played the last couple shows with us on bass, so we've got that. And Ran- and John Osborne sat in with us in Australia last week, which was awesome. And um, by the way, Adam Box, their drummer, nasty, nice, that boy, <laughs> nasty, just <laughs> nasty. Um, but so it, it's this is a thing in motion now for Randy. But while he's building whatever this is, the, this new thing that he's doing, he didn't want clicks. He didn't want loops. He'll look over. There's a couple songs where he's like, "Where are we at?" And I'll just kind of ballpark him, and he'll just, he'll go, and yeah. then I stop. So the beauty of that is um, now I have no option. Mm-hmm. I can't just tune out and listen to the click and just bang. I have to pay attention to him. And if he sounds like he's out of breath, I'll back it up, I'll slow down. Ah. And if he's if he's blasting everything, I stay right on the front of it, right where his right hand is, and yep. just push along. I love these skills. Yeah. These skills that come with time. Well, and, um, and I think that the more that young people can come to town and and find players that are find drummers in particular that are playing music, you get a guy like you, you, if you want to hear if like if you like old if you like nineties early nineties country yeah that that country. And you go down the lower Broadway. And Are you, you burping up your hot sauce? Yeah, I'm burping up my hot sauce. If you don't, <laughs> if, if you don't, if you don't go find Will Easterwood and listen, yeah. you're missing it because he's legit that. Um, that's my circus bear. Oh. Um, and Lee Kelly does that great too. I oh, think he's he playing with uh, Kendall Marvel right now too, which is going to be awesome. I like playing that stuff with the cross stick and all that. The I'm terrible at it, which yeah. is why I like watching dudes that do it. I actually, um, yeah, I can, yeah. And Tell if me. they want a guy that's kind of doing a slinkier thing, it's, it's kind of likes his soul drumming or whatever. Tip's pretty good with that that stuff. Tip, and, tip, and you know, there's there's dudes doing it, and you can find them. And you know, you want to see, you want to get cut a little bit, and you want to go see like some tasteful. You want to go down to Rudy's jazz room and see Neoshi or or or, oh, yeah. or or Marcus Marcus play. Yeah. Catch it. It's this town. Like you're not. It's happening. You're not in Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah. There's lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff happening. You know. The uh, our producer uh, Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy Voiceovers.com is like, hey, you're over an hour, man. That's what he's here. That's what he's there for. There was there any other amazing questions that we could just there's quickly address? A lot of adoration. Oh, that's there's really sweet. So so people are people are liking the fact that mm-hmm. two drummers got together. At Crash Studio for the first time ever. Really quickly, tell no, us about your side hustle. No. The, the, the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter Foods. The side hustle. Um, <laughs> MadHatterFoods.com. Is, so is your company? Or you're a partner? I'm or? a partner. Um, In hot sauce. Mm-hmm. And are you passionate about this? I am. You do cook. You're, 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 you're cooking. Yeah, and, 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 and kind of... You know, in the last couple of years, uh, due to uh, initially due to health reasons, and then a lot of people around me uh, are vegans. Uh, um, I, I got better at cooking healthy stuff. Yeah, uh, it's habanero. It's it's not vinegar based. It's olive oil based habanero nice. pineapple hot sauce. Oh, nice! Three different levels. It's like I'd be the mildest. It's like it's like rich, and then it's like it's like rich Redmond flavored. It's like the it's like the the mild the, base. the ba- like base heat, and then there's the middle which I kind of hang out in, which is hot 
because it's habanero, so it's got a little kick. And there's like the fighter pilot. For, it's like the Ben Caesar, Zoltan oh. Tobak heat. Zoltan likes the heat, like, huh? You're like dripping and Zoltan. Proud of and also, I'm proud of him. New kid came Moves to, to town. town. It works really hard. Came to town. He's just like, yeah, he just shuts up and plays drums. He, he shows up, <laughs> plays drums. He shows up and he plays drums, and he's good. He's good. He's a good little player. Yeah. Um, whew, this was great. Yeah, really man. great, man. Thank you for passion, stopping by, buddy. Passion. I love it. Passion, persistence. We talked about all things drums. Guys, thanks for checking this out. Episode 14 of Pick Rich's Brain. This is, uh, as always, is going to be on uh, Google Play iTunes, Stitcher Podcasts, and this fully produced episode will be on YouTube.com on my channel, YouTube.com forward slash Rich Redman. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. <laughs>